yeah um yeah thanks for, for uh, inviting me um for this talk um yeah i will talk about graphical exercises this j6 graph use mumia so the main point will be really about the graphical exercises um and yeah i mean yeah what, what do we mean <clears throat> what do we mean with graphical exercises um i mean that are Ex as you have already seen in other talks, I think, uh, that are exercises where the students solve the tasks by interacting with the vis visualization. Yeah. And the idea uh, is that, yeah, this helps uh, the students to link the mathematical expressions with the graphical meaning um, of, of the things. Yeah. And also if we give individual feedback to, to their solutions, then, then can <clears throat> we enable them to improve their abilities by uh, yeah step by step so that they see okay what is wrong and, and so go on and so on and yeah I think as all people here uh, know I mean chase is curve is really great uh, yeah we're here <laughs> for interactive visualizations and yeah with mumie uh, I have a powerful tool corrector system um, um, yeah and combining these twos, uh, we really um, can make very nice um, graphical exercises. And the ones that I will show you, um, yeah, I will show you three examples um, of these graphical exercises. They uh, yeah, are made uh, within a project with TI Ingolstadt. And yeah, and yeah, that's what I want to show you next. So <clears throat> what are these about these? I mean, the first example is about the mean value theorem. Or, and the second is about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And the third is about um, mappings. And yeah. So I, I will talk about movie at the end a little bit, tell you a little bit about the movie at the end. Uh, but first, I want to show you the examples and what, what, uh, what are, is done there. So um, they are written on the platform Mumia, but of course, I mean, we have this in Moodle. So I have here my test course in, <laughs> in our test Moodle. And I integrate here the, the exercises. Um, um, yeah, graphical exercises. And yeah, they are integrated um, as what is called Mumia task. And yeah, and if I open <clears throat> this one, then I get to the um, with, without extra sign in um, to the worksheet. So, okay. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so the first graphical exercise that I want to show you is the mean value theorem. Um, yeah, so, so we, we state here. Um, Below, what what is it about? To to just remind the student, um, yeah, that if you have continuous uh, function on an interval a b, which is differentiable in the interior of the interval, uh, then yeah, there's a <clears throat> value c in this interval where the uh, derivative is just the the slope of the uh, um, uh, of the second. Yeah. I mean that's what it. What um, really means this formula, um, and so that's the task of this for the students that they, um, um, yeah, should uh, understand that. So what should they do? Um, I mean, the function here in blue is just sine x plus one half x, and yeah, randomly there's chosen by the problem kind of um, yeah two values zero point four and six point five. And so, yeah, what the student should do is really put these lines to, to the correct boundaries. And then, yeah, uh, and then, um, yeah, sh he should move the green point with a tangent uh, so, so, that, um, so that he gets the, the correct, uh, correct value uh, for, for the C. Yeah. So you should, for given a and b, you should find find the c and insert the value here. Um, so you should understand what does it mean uh, and solve this task. 
So I, I just put in some um, random random things. Let's put in a one, and and if I press on save, then the whole problem is corrected, uh, and we get some explanation on the solution that is given. So the first thing is that the left point of the interval is wrong, and the right point is also wrong. You know, of course, I did it completely correct uh, wrong. So let's do a step further. So this should be at 0 0.4. And this one should be at 6.5. Yeah. Oh, not exactly, but I think it's, uh, we have some, some um, error boundary so that, that it's better for the students to, um, to get it, if they are not ex ex uh, correctly. Oh, it should be in English. <laughs> um, yeah, but now you see the explanation uh, is different. Um, so the boundaries are, are correct in the range of uh, uh, approximate range. And yeah, but uh, I got the wrong, uh, wrong point C. And that's what it says here that the, the C has to be chosen that the tangent is parallel to the to the second. Yeah. Okay, and then so the next thing is I choose that. So uh, I have one option here to get it parallel. Um, or this is no could be also down there. Um, and yeah, I mean the visualization is also done in that way that uh, that I can't put the um, point outside of, of this boundary, yeah, so that, that it's really inside here. So the leftmost is really that one, the rightmost is really that one. Um, yeah, so it's just a, a glider on this, this uh, uh, shorter curve. Okay, if I did, did that, also, yeah, um, I'm still not done because uh, as a student, I sh should see, okay, now I have put here and I have to get now 1.6 or 1.61 to be the right one. But if I just leave the one here, yeah, so I get another error um, again. So that I did all everything correct in the visualization, um, but the value that I put in was uh, was wrong, um, yeah, the correct value would have been the x coordinate of the green point, yeah. Okay, and then if, if I also get this correctly, then um, I finally get uh, the check mark that I got it correct. Yeah, yeah, and um, as you see here, I, I did that whole thing in training mode, which uh, which says, okay, um, that the student, he can just create a new one, uh, new data. You see, it's a little bit different. Now we have minus 0 0.5 and 4.4. .4. The curve, yeah, we didn't alter the curve too much. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's also it's still sine x plus some, some linear term. Um, yeah, made, made that the student get the um, get the idea and then can check again whether they have it done correctly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so that was the first um, yeah exercise that I wanted to show you. Um, yeah. The next next thing. From linear algebra is about uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, so, um, yeah. Let's start with a new exercise. Okay. Okay. So, so the point is, uh, what do we do here? We show uh, just at the start of the standard vector uh, one zero. Um, we have a random matrix A, being in that case minus one, two, one, one point five. 
and yeah, and we are looking for an eigenvector. And what we show in the in the uh, in the canvas is the vector and its image. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I can drag here the vector, and to help the student a little bit, we show not only the vector but then the whole line through the vector. And so the task is that the that the soon should move the vector um, to get an eigenvector for the matrix. Yeah, so the, he should be aware, OK, what is an eigenvector? It's an eigenvector where the image goes in the same direction. So I have to drag it in, at a place, for example, here, where the image goes in the same direction. And not only um, I have to get the eigenvector correctly, but then the next task is written down there that, yeah, one should also plug in the eigenvalue to that eigenvector. Uh, so that kind of should read off the, um, uh, yeah, read off the vectors, what is the eigenvalue? Yeah, so this is our vector 0, 9, 5, and 1, 1, 5, and um, 2, 0, 5, and 3.2. And so what is the eigenvalue? It's a ratio of this, for example, the two lower numbers. So it's 3.2 over 1.5. Um, yeah, I don't cancel it now. Oh, I mean, I, I could say to the student that he should cancel it um, to, to get really a fraction, but it's also OK to write that way. And if I put in save, then that's me. OK, I did everything correct. Yeah. And yeah. And I can do it again and, and again and do different things. And yeah. So if I don't, don't do it correctly, um, yeah, for example, I also get uh, feedback. Um, for example, if the vector is not correct, I get the feedback the vector is not an eyeing vector. Um, or also that if I do it correctly, for example, here, uh, let's let's keep the one, yeah. You know, then I get the feedback as a student that the um, eigenvector is correct, but the corresponding eigenvalue is not, and, and so and so on. Yeah. So th these are just different things where. Yeah, out of the the data of the canvas, um, yeah, which is the JSX graphics, um, we get information for the corrector, um, and which tells the corrector what explanation should be uh, shown. Yeah, and also because sometimes it's, it's a bit, um, yeah, as you have seen, it's might be a bit problematic to, to get it correctly here in the canvas, uh, to get a really the correct point. We also uh, allow to plug in the numbers down here. So uh, T2 is OK. Maybe I had to put a little better here. Oh, minus 1.4 was too much. Um, maybe 2.1 here uh, so that I really get Nine, yeah. So can plug in the numbers here, and it adapts in the in the graphics. Oh, and here you really see, okay, two point one. This is minus minus a double, and also here minus a double. So this is really the correct one. And yeah, so that would be, I guess, minus two. Yeah, and. As in all these exercises, um, so yeah, the yeah the author who, who created this uh, graphics had, or when I created this one, I had just to choose what uh, yeah what precision should be uh, used for the correction, so that it's not too hard to get it exactly correct. Uh, I mean, in that case, it's really. Uh, Nice, but uh, sometimes you had kind of an eigenvalue, my for example, of root of two, and graphically you can't really get <laughs> correctly that it's root of two. Yeah. 
Okay. So that is the second one that I wanted to show you. And yeah, so the third um, graphics that I wanted to show you um, is about um, the students should um, um, yeah, try to find out whether mappings, yeah, so maps between two sets, uh, yes, to con construct maps between two sets, which are well, either uh, injective or surjective or one and not the other uh, and so on. Yeah, so here in this example that I have just now, so we have a set A of four points and the set B currently it's five, has uh, five points, uh, uh, five elements. Yeah, and so yeah, we can change the order of the set B just by plugging in here the range, for example, three. So then we only have three. And then we can set arrows by clicking on the first um, on set A for a starting point and then in to B for the ending point. And so we have an arrow for saying, okay, this element is mapped to that one. Okay, and what was the task here? Uh, so the task here was that we should, yeah, add er arrows that displays a mapping which is subjective but not injective. Um, and also here we get different feedback on how how good or bad we, we solve the thing. And so in that case, for example, um, um, yeah. It should tell me that uh, it's not a mapping at all. Yeah, not a mapping. Yeah, and also, yeah, plain spot. Uh, and for mapping, we, every element in the source should have a target. So let's do that. And then um, just do that. And then we get the extra different feedback so that, yeah, my mapping is not subjective. Yeah, I mean, I chose just to say not subjective and didn't explain what really subjective means. So that would be so that the student uh, should think, okay, what what was subjective again? And yeah, and let's do it. Let's say four again, so that yeah, if I click on the arrow again, then it vanishes again. And so let's do a mapping. Which is subjective, um, but also injective, and then I get the feedback. Yeah, that my map is injective, but it shouldn't be injective. Yeah. Oh, and so, okay, I should have done that. Really, making it here to three, and do this. And then I get my my check mark. Yeah, and then in this um, exercise, um, yeah, we also so we varied, um, yeah, what what um, properties the function should uh, have. So, yeah, subjective but not injective, of course. Then let's try a new one. Um, Accidentally the same. Um, uh, oh, there's, I think I missed something here. Um, okay. Which is, oh, I think I missed to put in the text when, when translating it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so uh, it was in German first and then I translated it to English and I think I missed the text here. Okay, um, yeah, so um, so let's stop here with that <laughs> visualization. Um, obviously that exercise uh, that, um, yeah.
so we have other things where it should be injective but not subjective and so on. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. What's that question? No, okay. Um, okay. Um, so let's um, go back to um, to Moodle. Yeah, so, so I uh, have these in, in Moodle, yeah, as I showed you. So that's S1, I put it in S1 task uh, or S, S1 kind of worksheet, um, training worksheet, um, so that I have all, all the three in one, but I could also um, uh, uh, integrate them one by one so that I get different exercises. And also that, uh, yeah, I can, I showed you the training mode where the student can get, uh, yeah, can, can click on new exercise and get new exercises, but we can also uh, get it into Moodle as kind of homework, um, yeah, which then also has a deadline. And, and um, um, yeah, if I open it, what was that? Yeah, it's always this case if I do some showing what I didn't test. Okay. Um, I have to check why, why this maybe I didn't work right now. Should work. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. And what I wanted <laughs> to tell you about that is that yeah, the grades are shared with the uh, with the course. Yeah. I mean, you get for these exercises. Um, yeah, in the homework mode, yeah, you can also get grades, uh, and then um, the, these are um, yeah moved to uh, to Moodle, and you can use them as grades, like any other um, test or stack exercise or whatever. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go back to to my slides. Yeah, so these were three examples of, of yeah, of visualizations that, that we did. And um, as I say, said, um, it's Chase XCARF, I mean, the visualizations are Chase XCARF, which we uh, included in, in Mumia. And so I want to tell you a little bit about, about uh, Mumia. Um, what is it? Um, yeah, I mean, it's an independent platform, so independent of Moodle or Elias or whatever, um, for designed for e-learning, mathematics and computer science. And yeah, and as you saw via plugin, um, we can integrate these Moomi exercises into Moodle uh, or, yeah. And also we have a plugin for Elias and one for StudIP. Yeah. And what are, is the benefit of that is, of course, that we can better share it with other LMS. I mean, I always have the problem uh, when when I have a stack question, for example, in Elias. You know, I was at FH Aachen before, and there they use Elias, and then I have graded stack questions, and I cannot use them at their FH Aachen because they have Moodle. I mean, now it's it's beginning to get better. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, but, but that was always a problem to get it to, to the other LMS, and yeah, um, with Mumia, I mean, have an external platform and just integrate it via, via plugin. Then we can use the same question at Moodle, Elias, whatever. And another problem that occurred to me with the stake questions is that when when we had an update, that uh, something didn't work anymore. And yeah, um, and so, so we only uh, have all of this. If it's an external platform. Um, but yeah, just the plugin has is uh, is adapted, and then the code exercises they work the same. And what I also like at the Mumi questions is that the, for the authors, uh, I find it much easier because um, the 
syntax uh, for creating these questions um, is LaTeX based. And so it's kind of LaTeX code that you that you write, um, and yeah, for all for all these uh, exercises. Yeah, and of course, um, um, when, when you, you use the um, Mumia, um, you get also support from us. So us is an integral learning um, company I'm half working for. And yeah, so sure. Um, yeah, well, this latex based syntax. Um, so just a kind of a short screenshot uh, from the exercise with the eigenvalues and uh, um, uh, eigenvectors. Um, yeah, <clears throat> so that, that that's how how the thing looks like um, in in the code. Um, there's just an environment which we call generic JSX visualization, um, and you define variables. Um, these are <clears throat> the variables that, the, yeah, the entries of the matrix that the visualization gets from from the problem environment, kind of, and then we define points, vectors, and so on. Um, yeah, just this kind of like latex command, special commands for latex. And yeah, and all and all the the um, 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 dependencies uh, and interaction. Um, so that that the vector is also. I mean, we have seen that the vector also is uh, uh, is shown in in the text. And if we update the um, visualization, the text updates. And if we update the text, the visualization updates. This is all done in the background. Uh, yeah, that the movie background and uh, yeah, the author here he just has to use the variables like uh, like p has to display it. A, a, I think yeah, p is the point here has to display it in in the visualization by a command um, um, and and also displayed in in the text by a small command. Yeah, a little bit more about Mumie. Um, yeah, by several uh, or corporations. I mean, for example, I showed you three examples which were um, made in cooperation with uh, TIA Ingolstadt. Um, also, when I was in F at FA Aachen, we had did several um, graphical exercises also. And yeah, and we have a much bigger pool of also other um, exercises. Um, yeah. And the pool can be searched by tags and topics and so on. And yeah, the Mumu platform also provides whole courses. For example, some our hugest ones are the OMB Plus, the online mathematics bridge course, which is on the Mumu platform, and the Heim for Mint course, which is the um, mathematics one for engineers or for STEM studies. Um, yeah. And also, both courses can be integrated into your local LMS um, via the plugin. Yeah, so the students don't need an extra login for uh, for these courses then, um, and uh, yeah, and the grades are synchronized with the Moodle that, that they have here. Um, yeah, and at EverTH, I use it uh, quite quite a lot. Yes. Okay, and yeah, so more information. So, for example, if you want to see the <laughs> the visit or the exercise that I showed you, it can be also found on demo.net. And we also have a wiki about how to integrate the uh, uh, the plugin or get the plugin into your LMS. And yeah, and. For further information and whatever, um, if you have questions, just contact directly me at Andreas Morishet at integral learning.de or our channel address is contact at integral learning. Yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs>